Big Fluff. Hello, world. It's Stephanie Smart, and I am here to tell you. that I know some shit. Exotica. Hi, everybody. I'm Joel Murphy. And I'm Stephanie Smarr. And this is Stephanie Knows Some Shit. Where we go over all of the amazing wonders of the world and really try to demyth, debunk, or overhype them. I feel like we are, we are a concepts wing woman and man and partner, 100%. Um, but today we're going to do it a little different. And I'm so excited because one of the amazing things about the podcast is we don't know what we're doing. So we make up the rules <laughs> yeah. every single week. Yes. Yeah, that is true. We, this is all by the seat of our pants. This, All this by the part. seat of our pants. Yeah. I honestly, two seconds ago, I just ran up here and put on the, you know, the the Zoomy thing where we do the podcast. But I was sewing. I was pulling a bread pudding out of my fridge, out of my um, oven. And I was third proofing a focaccia. And David looked at me and he was like, he had said this several times over the course of the past hour. But he was like, is it time? And I was like, I don't know, because I forgot to put my watch on today. But now we're here. My sewing is on hold. My bread pudding is out and looks beautiful. We're definitely going to have to do a bread-ish episode. Yeah. And when I say ish, because I don't know, I'm not trained. I definitely have an intuition that's a step up, but I'm getting pretty passionate, guys. So I definitely be on I, the pike. Yeah, I had Joe that, works for a bread company. I was going to say, yeah, I work for a bread company and I had that phase myself, like my own uh, personal making bread that i did for a while where i was using that flour salt uh water yeast, yeast. book yeah uh which was really delightful like did, i like the i don't know if you like this part i like the tactile like sort of touching Absolutely. of the bread and that part where you're like uh pulling it into a tight ball so that it can mm -hmm. proof it's very there's something very satisfying about that so you just explained like how much i love cooking just in that like there's something or when a really shaggy wet dough starts to come together and yeah. you're just like this is magic well and, and it's, bread it, is magic it is and it's such a cool thing when when it clicks like you can read it in books and you can try to figure it out but like when you can look at your own dough and start to realize what it needs uh, this is too wet it's it needs more flour yeah. like and once you start getting that feel for it that's a really cool thing i i i totally agree and it's one of the few cooking things like there's there's routine and everything but but bread baking is incredibly routine based and so i'm at the point where this is the first time i've really ever made bread this is a lie because i did used to do the bread program at number nine but like in my home where i'm measuring out everything and i'm looking at my flour i've been so blessed to work in places like when i worked at srv in the south end we actually milled our own flour oh wow from grain to flour like sifted it by these two humongous hands sifted all that flour, like really, really cool. And so it's got me thinking just like on a deep level, which I've been dying for recently, just to have something food related just to like sink my teeth into. Yeah. And bread. Bread is winning. Yeah. And everybody loves bread. That's the thing. You make bread. People are going to be happy. I, I'm resisting the urge to get in the weeds with you because we should do a bread episode of like king arthur flour what are you using flour are you are you weighing that arthur. are you weighing the flour or are you measuring it with measuring cup? i'm weighing the flour okay there you go all right i heard king arthur organic bread and all purpose is the closest you can get to like great commercial grade flour yeah that's what i always used and that's what i've always heard is that king mm -hmm. arthur is really good i actually before we get to the actual topic of today have an interesting little story just to talk about like how bread the flour, how flour differentiates. Um, so I used to have a donut pop up where I would make donuts once or twice a weekend in humongous 25 pound batches um, and sell them, whatever. It was a rocking good time. It was so fun. But there was one day where I wasn't able to prep the dough myself. Right. No big deal. It's a recipe. It's a recipe tattooed on my arm. Like it's not it's not science. 
Um, but so my friend Justin made the donuts and we fry them. And I'm like, dude, these are fucking banging. I was like, these are so good. I was like, what did you do differently? And I wasn't being sarcastic or anything. And he goes, honestly, I followed the recipe and I was like, touche. And he was like, I use King Arthur flour because I was using like BJ's flour. You know what I mean? Because it was all out of my pocket. So anything to save a dime. But it made a huge difference. And like flour has an expiration date because you're going to lose that. You think of flour as a neutral flavor, but but that's what gives you that nutty, that woody, that just gorgeous. I'm really on a bread kick right now. Also, King Arthur's flower. If you're listening, I, you know, maybe throw us some money. Like this was King all Arthur, unsolicited. King Arthur is like it's up there with maybe four brands that I'm like never, ever, ever go away from these. I did have that too, where because uh, yeah, I, I've got into the bread. I was like slightly ahead of the curve on the pandemic. Okay, like you were pre-pan. I was pre-pandemic. But then the funny thing was when the pandemic hit and then there were shortages of everything, you couldn't get King Arthur's flower. So I had gotten right. used to it and then I had to go to just what was available. And it definitely had that of like, this isn't as good. Flower was a legit thing that we had to fear. I forgot about that. That was that was wild. But right now I'm going through a really serious Bread thing. And, you know, Joel, I don't think it's because I want to become the best bread baker, but I want there. I've been thinking about it recently. My confidence with cooking is very high. You know what I mean? Like, I know it's my profession and my career, but I actually am at a point where I'm like, I really feel like I know what I'm doing. You know, like this is really like. And intuition guides me through 99% of that. So to have something like bread baking, where literally you cannot be an intu you can be intuitive to a, a degree, but you have to like read yeah, the words it, Professor Reinhardt worked. No, I think that's why it appeals to me, because I've talked a little bit about this on the show before, too, that I am not great at the improvisational cooking, but the following a recipe thing I can do. So I like bread appeals to me because right. it's very specific and sciencey and like it, you can follow. Yes. You know, you still have to get a feel for it. You still have to kind of use some intuition. But essentially, there is a very clear step by step guide to follow. And you really can't be like, ah, I'm going to see what happens if I, you know, double the flour or. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Precisely. And I just think that that's like, you know, we talk about hobbies and stuff so often on here. I'm like, this is so cool because then you start to think and you're like, maybe I could go down to off the boat lobsters or my boys at Skipper Bay Lobster and trade them bread for lobster. Like, or maybe I buy the love of our next door neighbor who we're now Instagram friends. I doubt she listens to this, but she's definitely getting bread because I want her to be my friend. <laughs> like bread is it's going everywhere. This is better than beating. My beating hobby got really in the way. I, I do feel like you have you have an easier time finding people yes. to who are like, oh, yeah, bread. The, no offense to beating and the beating community who I'm Not sure that my beatings were horrible, but, but you you acute. It only takes so long to make a necklace. Yeah. Like right. I need I need a lot of time. All right. But we, this was all. This was just the preamble to what we have planned for this week. This is just a yeah. preamble. Which this is, is preamble. yeah, we are, uh, we have, a, so a, one more plug for something, which is that uh, we have a really wonderful Instagram community, which has been lovely and everybody who participates in it is uh, delightful and uh, enjoyable and they uh, are very kind about the show. Uh, so we asked them. So I'm saying that to say, if you don't follow our Instagram, you should probably follow our Instagram because oh, that's it's it's happening there. But and that's Stephanie knows some shit on Instagram. But we asked them uh, for questions uh, if they had things that they wanted answered on the show and they came through. And so we thought we would do like a question and answer episode where we're just going to go through things that people want to know because you were all very kind to listen to the the topics that we have picked but there you know there might be some specific stuff we have not addressed maybe you're curious about something and joel i'm so traumatized deadly curious by this first question okay it is from a man i'm gonna hold off on his okay it just says 
you wearing socks with a winky face? Okay, so you let's be I want to be clear on something because I just promoted our Instagram. So I have questions from people who follow our show on Instagram. You also <laughs> put the question out to your personal Instagram. And I so got my own. And so I think you have a different <laughs> I've got some really good ones. Yeah, yeah. But I'm I've just some, saying that was the first one that I looked at. So man with a C, I fucking love you because that talk about an icebreaker. And I'm not wearing any socks. It's summer. Do you think that's what he was hoping? I I don't want to dive into this, but I, I'm wondering what which of those answers he wants. I think he knew he was like, this is a child that cannot spare herself from reading something of twinge awkward. So I win. Do and you wear, right. Do you wear socks around the house? I can't wear I, I do not. Absolutely yeah. not. I can only wear socks absolutely if I'm wearing not. shoes. I don't wear just socks. So I've got these really fuzzy fleecy socks for Christmassy time and those are amazing and incredibly comfortable but I'm like pretty sans socks for the most part I don't yeah. need that and they always no matter what you buy a pair of socks you wear them once you didn't take your shoes off they're brown yeah like I hate that I can't handle that okay so now that we have that one all right well, let me go can I go to one from our Instagram so you we go to these, one. yeah these are a little more uh I don't know on topic food, food related I'll, I'll say, yeah <laughs> Uh, I liked this one a lot, so I'll. I hope people want their names read. I don't know, but this is yeah, from. Yeah, we're doing it. Yeah, this is from Amy Hazelnut, uh, who said, "What isn't worth it to cook yourself, and what should you always take time to cook?" I like that question. Like, so what? That's a brilliant question. Yeah. You know, I've been having that conversation a lot with David recently, but it's more on what is worth growing and what's not, because we were talking about onions. Like, you can buy a hundred Brazilian onions. Um, okay, things that I do not think are worth buying versus things that I do think that are worth buying. Any sort of fancy dessert or pastry or ice cream or something decadent fruit, I will spend a ton of money on because I can't do it and I love it so much i will say i i started making ice cream and i really enjoy that i, I bought one of those ice cream makers yeah. and i did too at the beginning of the summer and it's a blast yeah so i do like making ice cream but everything else i agree with you on those like really fancy desserts desserts and... that you're like i'm not going to do this by myself and whose recipe do i use for david Lebowitz's vanilla ice cream recipe super solid um so that kind of stuff now if i'm in a pinch and i'm next to a sandwich shop or a grocery store and I'm going to eat at home regardless. I'm just going to make myself that sandwich because I do it better. Yeah. You know, um, if I'm going to grill, I'm going to grill at home. I'm not yeah. unless it's barbecue and I'm really not like a huge barbecue person. I like it. I respect it, but it's not my go to meal. And then there are some Chinese foods that it's like, do not destroy this with your innovative touch like don't fuck up my crab rangoon yeah don't don't use real crab in it don't use a dumpling wrapper that it's do not mess that up for me because i become so sad yeah that's a real part of like my eating again i broke my foot eating a crab rangoon like it's a very serious food in my life you have a tattoo of crab rangoon too I do like that's not that's any less serious. Yeah. All right. So, so yeah. Yeah. Really I think that... great question. Um, another thing that I prefer to eat at home over out, which is going to surprise people, is pasta. That that I doesn't. Know how I don't I find like that... pasta. Yeah, I get that. Um, I think people do a shit ton with pasta that I don't appreciate. Like, don't you don't put so much stuff on it so great question we really appreciate that one i also um, i i with you too like sometimes this might sound blasphemous to you but some just like a box of pasta with a like a pre-made thing of sauce is sometimes yeah. made at home up. is yeah that's how i grew up yeah me too Go so i think that's sp spaghetti or bow ties prego and my mom added meat sauce and ginger ale we talked about that already though we don't have to go back yeah what was it the under the sink that she kept yeah uh, yeah she keeps it with the chemicals and then yeah. swirls the jar because 
Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I love you, mom. All right. Um, okay, so great question. All right. Do you All have right, one or mine. yeah, you got one? I it's, have one. It's not about things that you're wearing, right? Like Nope. Okay. It's about Top Chef, actually. Okay. Rhiannon Gonzalez, what was your favorite and least favorite Top Chef quick fire? So easily my least favorite Top Chef quick fire was the Kelly Clarkson Trolls Cook with the Rainbow one. I messed it up so bad. I made a spring roll, which in Top Chef regular, not all stars, is totally fine. And I probably would have just like skated on through and whatnot. But it was such an amateur move and my knife cuts were shit. And like, it just wasn't mine. You had to think a lot bigger than I was willing to think in that moment. And that was frustrating beyond anything. Um, and then my favorite quick fire was a challenge where we got like cliche food. So it was kale, bacon, the egg. And one other. I don't remember what it was, but I got bacon and I made um, a caramelized bacon and butternut squash pasta in 25 minutes yeah and that was just bomb i was just like i just felt it in my bones i was like i got this do you feel like you had a pretty good gauge for how you were going to do in the judging like could you were you ever surprised in the in the quick fires uh, or did you no, usually when i tell you from the bottom of my heart that you know 100 percent how you did yeah before the food even hits the plate you there's not you know <laughs> there is nobody is ever like wow that tasted like such poo poo but they loved it yeah i feel like a lot of and i love top chef but i feel like they do you know it's their job as tv producers to edit it in a way to make it look close I still yeah there on my dying day that the, all that editing that you think you're seeing there's definitely editing so it reads like a show but they're not like editing us. Well, no, I, I didn't mean editing you, but I'm saying like we're I feel like even watching it, you can kind of see they want they want to make it ambiguous as to who's going to win or who's going to lose. But I, I would imagine, you know, like it's usually yeah. pretty obvious, you know, because you'll see. So I mostly mean the editing of like when the judges are talking about the food. Yes, they're they're trying to just weigh it so that it seems plausible that more things are in the running than actually oh, are my gosh it is it is traumatic so those <laughs> were definitely like i'm still trying to find out what this quick fire challenge kale bacon smoked food or eggs that was going to literally that i was going <laughs> to stay up all night worrying <laughs> about that um but yeah, that that rainbow challenge and that's my shit. Like, I love rainbows so much. There was so much you could do. I really struggled with quick fires, though, 100 percent. I'm not I love to think on my feet, but on my terms. Yeah. Uh, which is just a therapy session in itself. <laughs> All right. Well, I have I have another question for you. This is from All right, shoot. This is from C Tarb 16. Wants to know, what is your dream culinary trip? Oh, dude, easy. Japan. Ooh, nice. Japan without even a missed breath. What and what um, is like, why specifically Japan? Uh, precision. To see food made with that level of precision, and I mean precision and flavor, precision and everything, precision being like a bulk word. Have you ever seen um, that documentary, uh, Euro Dreams of Sushi? It's amazing. Yeah, that like w when you say Japan and you say precision, it's just that's immediately what I think of. And he's it. also making the most flavorful, incredible, delicious sushi. Yeah. You know, and then you've got. I, there's so many influence. Japan would just be like in a heartbeat. You know where else I'm dying to go that hmm. people make fun of that I am dying to go? Canada. Yeah, I get that. I've never been to Canada. I want to go to Montreal. I want to eat. Eat. I had a dream in my teens that I lived in Canada. And since then, I've thought like in a weird way that I am somehow like 
destined for this Canadian lifestyle. No, I yeah, Canada is great. I I've only ever been to Toronto and I didn't spend enough time there. But yeah, it, it's great and like poutine is amazing and all the Poutine's food. Amazing. That, yeah, the food that I ate there was all fantastic. Yeah, Canada yeah, so is, is Japan great. And, Japan and Canada, but then you start talking about it and you're like, oh my god, I'd love to go to Spain. I'd love to go to France. I'd love to go to India. I'd love to go to Turkey and Morocco and like any chance. I unfortunately did not see the beauty in traveling in my 20s. I didn't have the money, number one. I did a lot of traveling domestically because my mom was a flight attendant, so I could fly around the country really easily, but I didn't do international. And now it's like, you know, we're young, we're fun, we're healthy. It's like, stop making excuses and flights aren't that bad right now. Like, maybe you don't fly in the nicest seat. Just suck it up. You'll forget about it once you get there. Yeah. I spend a lot of time. This is not food related, but I I watch a lot of YouTube videos about Iceland and just really want to go. Ah, Yeah, right. ah, Yeah. There is one of I think it's Iceland. So Kristen went to Iceland by herself and she sent me and it's the funniest picture I've ever seen. She got a speeding ticket via one of those like overhead cameras and she is clutching the wheel at two and (laughs) eleven and her sunglasses like depigmatized so it looks like she has big nerdy glasses on it's incredible (laughs) that is great Mm -hmm. she's also in like antarctica right now or something she travels all the time you want to talk about someone that's like making the most i can't even kick up with it yeah i'm like okay call me when you i barely even ask now We just wanted to take a moment. Our dear friend, Top Chef alum, Fast Foodies, currently, uh, Justin Sutherland was in a bad boating accident and we wanted to highlight his GoFundMe. Like so many chefs, he does not have health insurance, which makes, even though you see him on TV, guys, does not make him the wealthiest man in the world. So we want to make sure that he is well taken care of. So his GoFundMe, if you want to donate, we will put the link up in our show notes. We'll also put it up at stephaniekowsomeshit.com. And on our Instagram, you can find the link there. And anything that I think anyone can give would help him as he recovers. Absolutely, Joel. All right. Do you have a... You got one? Okay. I thought that was another great question. Five desert island condiments. This is made for me. I love this question more than anything. Five is a lot. Five is a lot, but I think I can do it. Okay. Helmet, Hellman's mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. Which also, I mean, now see, this is where I get in the weeds on this. Is there refrigeration? (laughs) Like, are we assuming the desert island you can keep? Because mayonnaise. Yes. Yes. We'll we'll, we'll dig a hole. Okay. So that the like, you know, that'll be fine. Okay. Um, I need. Ketchup. Mm-hmm. I this is hard. <laughs> what, else do I, what else do I need? I need sugar. Is sugar a condiment? I put sugar as if it were a condiment. Okay. It's bad. My teeth, my teeth are going to fall out. Um. Oh, I need magic shell. Oh, the ice cream stuff? Hot fudge for yeah. the ice cream. That stuff is Because I'm going to be able to make ice cream. That it, d- Joel, and you add extra sprinkles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's four. What about you while I think about this? Yeah, that's... A, I was honestly... I was Googling condiments because I was, like, trying to figure out what is... Because, like, it says, like, honey is a condiment, which I right. guess it's true. So, like, I would put that on the list. Like, I would definitely say I need some kind of mustard. So, like, I've got to have... Even if it's just, okay. like, just a brown mustard. I'd say honey if we're counting brown. honey. Well, or just, like, a... You know, I don't know, whatever. Mustard. A mustard, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, it could be the yellow, you know, classic mustard. I'm good. Uh, I mean... This this list that I googled really quick. That's condiment. Oh, sriracha, definitely sriracha. Which Love there's that. which there's a shortage of sriracha. I'm very concerned. I heard because they were like blowing up the yeah 
the, uh, the town was like too full of gas. Yeah, I don't know the the specifics, but I know that they because a lot of restaurants in L.A. are are asking people like if you bring them sriracha, they'll give you free food right now because they're having trouble. Um, I will be bringing you sriracha. <laughs> uh, probably. Yeah, I agree with you, mayonnaise, because then, you know, you got to make your aiolis. I just you know? don't want a dry sandwich. We don't I can wanna... dip French fries in that. I can drip potato chips in that. Like anything. I can make coleslaw. But also, you get sriracha and you get mayonnaise and you mix those together and, you know, now you're... You have a yum yum world's gift sauce. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. The, well, okay. This is a marinara is a condiment. So, if that... No, if we're, that's a sauce. No, I was no, gonna no. Say, that's, they yeah. took it too far. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm just like Googling different things of condiments to try to figure out. But I think... Yeah. Well, I haven't said ketchup. So, we'll say... Yeah, I got like a ketchup, a mustard, a mayonnaise... Um, sriracha. Did I have? I feel like I had one more, but now I can't remember what I already said. But something in there. What about you? You got your? It's mayo, ketchup, mayo, ketchup, black vinegar, like dumpling black vinegar. Ken's honey mustard dressing. And Martinelli's, Martin Yeti's, um, medium spicy banana peppers. Nice. Sliced. I like it. But that changes. That can change to a pickle on a dime is just where my head is. Yeah. And that, that pickling liquid. Ooh, that's the good... answer to all of your problems. It's salad dressing. Yeah. No. It's a marinade. Yeah. No, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah I, I'll say that for my, I think I didn't have a fifth one. So that's my fifth is pickling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like a pickle. I mm -hmm. love a pickle. Mm -hmm. I once ate a whole quart of Grillo's pickles over the course of the night years <laughs> and years and years ago. And I am so sensitive to salt. Like it grows, it runs in my family. I woke up and I was like, I couldn't, bl I couldn't unblink and my eyes were glued together. And I was like, oh man. The end. Mm -hmm. I thought, all okay, right, I got another one for you. I thought this was an interesting question. This is from carol.vla who mm -hmm. wanted to know what do you miss the most and the least about restaurant kitchens the most i definitely miss the camaraderie and the dance of cooking together and the art the dance i miss the dance so so much what i don't miss is the budding of heads yeah that makes sense. Which I know sounds so vague, but like. But I know what you mean. Yeah. But I do miss working with great people when you look around at the end of the night and you're like, we just slayed. Like, we just crushed it so bad. Um, somebody asked if we have podcast transcripts. Uh, we don't. No. Yeah, that would. I would love to have that. Uh, but yeah, we, we don't. Uh, I. I haven't really talked much about the fact that I, I started putting... Let's talk about this, Joel. Let's <laughs> well, talk about me. Well, I was going to say, I started putting our podcast on YouTube, which I think might auto-transcript, but I haven't looked enough into that. But Okay. Uh, so it w which, if people want to watch it too, on YouTube, you can watch... Uh, you, it's the audio, but so what I did for the video, because you need some kind of video component, I thought this was genius, is... Uh, it's just a looping video of a pizza oven running. I love that. So you can just stare at a pizza oven and listen to our show on YouTube. I love that. Yeah. And All I right, do, now. I know this isn't what they're probably hoping for, but I do always do transcripts when I post the audio clips on yeah. Instagram. So those are always transcribed. Because you're the best. So just so everybody knows, everything but when you hear my voice is produced by Joel. So big ups to Joel. I know you're all clapping in your car and we appreciate it and we hear it. Yeah. Um, thank but, you. But he is the guy behind all of the magic that is putting the show together, especially when it's like 637 and he's like, are we podcasting today? <laughs> and I'm knee deep in bread pudding being like, oh, no. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, but really great questions. All right. I got 
best worst dish did you recover or toss from it? I've had a few dishes that have gone south. One that just popped into my mind was Chris and I were working at Stir and we had carbonara on the menu and I was going through a real phase because everybody knows that's like fun to make, blah, blah, blah. And for some reason, rather than refrigerating the pasta, I was like, I'll just leave it out. Right. So the pasta is air drying for everybody out there. I put the pasta in the boiling water for the 25 seconds it normally takes when it's fresh. And I pull it out and I start mixing it into the sauce. And I'm like, this shit looks crunchy AF. And the pasta just 100 percent was not cooked. And Kristen and I are giggling and people are eating this crunchy pasta. And we're like, it's like a new way. It's kind of like a bird's <laughs> nest. You're trying to sell um, it. <laughs> totally sold them on it. They were like, this is not that great. But, you know, thank you for your humility. Um, How... And then I'm trying to think if I've ever had a meal so bad out. I'm just curious, too. How far can you get in the restaurant world with like a confident emperor's new clothes approach to <laughs> uh, selling people on things? If you have in the first week, the initial week of opening, if you've got praise, you don't need to convince people. <laughs> they are convinced. Yeah. <laughs> this is phenomenal. And that is how they will die on those laurels. Yeah. Um, that was just a bad one. But you know what's a dish that, and this is not me being self-deprecating, but for All Stars finale, my veal dish really got away from me. And it wasn't that it was inedible or gross, but it really, really, in a way I can't explain, got away from me. So that one pisses me off. And then I'm trying to think of restaurants. I've had some really gross things in restaurants. Like I had a salmon wrap with goat cheese that and really vinegary greens that just like will never leave my mind in italy david and i got served a piece of bad fish and we argued with the guy and he was like it's salt cod and we were like you're full of shit it's not salt cod we know what this is um do you send stuff those, back like if it's uh it has to be yeah. so bad there for me to become aggravated in a restaurant is like it's a lot because I'm so happy to be there. Yeah. I'm so happy. Yeah. What about you? Bad meals or do I? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I, I was trying to like. Yeah. I, I'm. I like, luckily I, I'm nothing. <laughs> oh, I will. I'm not going to say the place, but. I did have Molly and I uh, like got recommended this place that did uh, like vegan burgers in L.A. Mm -hmm. And it is widely like people love this place and people are always recommending it. And we tried it. And I think like I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that I think something happened with their oil that okay. the oil was not good. It, good. it, it had turned. <laughs> And so we got burgers and fries from them and it was immediately upon trying it. You could tell like it did not taste correct. And and so it's one of those things where like we we both like took a few bites of it and we're like looking at each other. It's like this is not just me. Right. And we're like, no, this is off. And so I, I've heard from a lot of people that they like this place and I am willing to recognize that they probably had a bad night, but I also have never had any desire to give them another chance. <laughs> once you have something nasty, though, you're just like, you know what? I'm cool. Like Kristen once got um, she ate it right before me. She got a bagel with bad cream cheese on it. And it oh. was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. But she tossed her cookies. Oh, yeah. I, I had that like the burger. I definitely my stomach had a reaction <laughs> that was it's not good yeah it was it was not good so that that's probably the worst that i've had in la and like i said it's everyone i've talked to like raves about this place so i don't know what happened oh. that one day okay yeah okay interesting all right another one Oh, I have a, yeah i got one Ooh, you go babe oh, who did go. i don't know who did the last one i'm losing track but uh doesn't matter but but kind of related to this is um Morgan Morgan T Gigante 
uh, wants to know your favorite restaurants in Boston and in Maine. In Boston, so easy. Barmazana. We got married there. Oh. Sarma, Oleana, Chickadee, Al Dente for somewhat subpar Italian in the North End, but I love it there so much. Um, Cafe Sushi. Um, and then up here, this is going to be, this is a very different sounding list. There is a gas station in <laughs> New York. It's a shell. And in the gas station, there is a sandwich and pizza place called Anthony's. And these sandwiches are so bomb. They're so good. They're so good. They're Italian sub primo. And I am, we all know I love a sandwich. So that's really good. Um, in Portland, we just went to a place called Mommy, Mani, Mani, I think. Really, really good fusion. We love honey paw. We love eventide. Um, there was, even though I don't drink, there's a cocktail bar called Blythe and Burrow, which makes really good, um, non-alcoholic drinks. I refuse to say mocktail. I just like, yeah. I hate the word mocktail, um, non-alcoholic drinks, but they also make really great boozy drinks. Um, we love the York Harbor Inn, except it was a place where I went exclusively drinking. So we haven't been back since I quit drinking. Cause I honestly don't even know what it's going to look like inside. Um, Anju Noodle Bar, which is a ramen place. There is Vita Cantina, which is a Mexican place, which is phenomenal. Um, there's a place called Lobster Cove, which has a really beautiful view and good, lob like fine lobster bisque. We're just starting to get out there. Oh, we just went to a brunch place called Via Sofia, I think, on Sunday with friends, everybody, <laughs> Michael and Crosby. These are two friends who were there, our friends. And that was magical. Um, beautiful space, beautiful, just like totally took you out of the woods and put you into a bit of a city. Really good. It was Sophia something and Kenny Bunkport. Three thumbs up. And I got pancakes. I never get pancakes, but I was just like there in the mood for pancakes and eggs sometimes freak me out. And they were so good. I've been dreaming about them. Pancakes, by the way, the, to go back to, I think that was the first question. I think are one mm -hmm. that I prefer to make over getting at a restaurant. Hands down. Yeah. Don't make them too thick. Do not make them too big. Do not make them. I don't need a shovel. I need I need this to be thoughtful. Yeah, I think that is part of the problem is restaurants have a tendency to view Bigger pancakes. Yeah, that it's like it a huge stack huge. of way too much. And pancakes don't keep. So if you don't eat them. They... Yeah, no. Now you've just got sad bread. Yeah. <laughs> Except like delicious. I love maple syrup so much and I love cold butter. So if I get a piece of pancake with a piece of cold butter and maple syrup, your girl's in heaven. Also, is maple syrup, is that a condiment? Because now I might have to rethink. It is, and it's a main condiment. Yeah, so we have to, we got to redo that list. For, we do all, only, yeah. we only talk about Maine now. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh. Okay, yeah. What else do you got for me? Oh, um, we got... Uh, well, speaking of, I actually have another main question. If we're all the Two. all main, uh, Castle Beckins wants to know why you moved to Maine. That is Castle. That's a beautiful question. I know Castle Beckins. I think I follow them on Instagram. Um, so in the midst of the pandemic, David and I had spent a lot of time up in New York because I used to teach at what's now closed, but Stonewall Kitchen doing classes and we loved it and it was whatever. And we had a wedding to cater up here. So we drove up and I was like, why don't we look at houses? And David, we have no money. We have no nothing. So David was like, sure, whatever, just shut up and that'll be fine. So we look at three houses. One was built in like 1400s full of asbestos and creepy dolls. One was on a plot that wasn't even built yet. And then we looked at our house and David and I were like, oh my God, like needs such little work. It's sort of in this imaginary budget we've written for ourselves. Like this will be great. And so we put an order in 
in order. And this is how much I don't know what happened. <laughs> I'm standing in Whole Foods buying strawberries and our real estate agent, John, calls and he's like, you've got it. And I was like, oh, no. And then somehow, by the grace of God, David and I, and through a lot of people's just kindness, we were able to get the house. But we moved truly because like, we lived in the South End in 500 square feet. There was only the bathroom door. We'd never lived together so much because of our work. It just was like, it was too much for us. We needed space. So that's how we ended up moving. Yeah, makes total sense. All right. Do you have, if you have maybe one more question you want to do, because we're running out of time. And then I have some, if you're ready for it, uh, I thought we could do like rapid fire, get through some at the end. Oh my God. That's going to make me so happy. Okay. All right. What is your overhyped seasonal vegetable? Fiddleheads. What are fiddleheads? They're gross. <laughs> I don't even know They're what that gross. is. Kind of like what you like would assume like a curly asparagus would taste like, but they're just not good. So you're not missing anything. All right. Yeah. I, I've missed the fiddlehead craze, but I'm, I'm glad. I'll make them for you once I get out there. I'll actually <laughs> be in Seattle in two weeks. Oh, I'll talk to you about that. Yeah. Yeah. Let me know. All right. Um, okay. Are we ready? Are you ready for, we gotta be quick. Yeah. These, yep, are, these are quick. Okay. Favorite food city and least favorite food city. Favorite food city, New York. Least favorite food city. Tucson. I'm going to say New Orleans favorite. Least favorite, St. Louis. And that's, okay. yeah. I, there's probably good stuff there, but not the trip that I took. <laughs> but listen, I get it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Favorite summer dish? Panzana. I'm going to say street corn. I like street corn. Oh, that's so strong. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, favorite chain restaurant? Cheesecake Factory. Ooh. Panera Bread, Panera Bread, <laughs> Panera Bread, Chipotle. I really like Chipotle. Love that for you. Yeah, no, that one's good. Uh, <laughs> this one's just for you because I haven't tried it. But uh, favorite Skittle water flavor? Green. Okay, which is green apple? I think we talked about this. It's not lime. It's green apple, but I'm kind of like I also really love the orange. But guys. If somebody else drinks dirty water, and I'm not talking crystal light, I don't need that in my life. Somebody likes weird flavored water, hit me up because I need some, I need some newness. Fair enough. All right. I also, this is, so people have asked if you've seen the show The Bear on Hulu. There was more than one question about that, which is a- I have not. Which I kind of thought that you hadn't, but I'm going to- uh, amend that maybe we'll try to i don't know like maybe we can dive into that at some point on a future show because there was more than one question about that and i've seen the trailers for it it seems okay. like it's set in well, a kitchen I, like I don't know i haven't seen it so i, I can't because okay, uh, you know that i don't like anything that's scary sad bloody yeah. well, anything it, overly happy underly happy it's set in a kitchen so i think it's like set kind of stressfully like you know in like a busy okay then kitchen. i could be into that uh but i was kind of curious since you don't know that I'm going to ask this if is there what's your favorite drama, you know, like scripted show that is food related? Do you have one that's like, you know, there, it could be a movie yeah. either or just something that has food in it that you really Midnight Tokyo Diner. Nice. Yeah, easily. Hands down. One hundred percent. Not even a question in my mind. <laughs> that was. Yeah. Why do you want to sing the praises of? Midnight Tokyo um, Diner? It's on Netflix and it's one of the most beautiful, relaxing shows with a premise and a storyline. And there's a heavy cooking underlay where you actually learn things like how incredible Japanese potato salad is. Um, it's it's a phenomenal show. So I highly suggest it. It is in subtitles. But if you're listening to this, you're old enough to read. Mm -hmm. By the way, have you ever seen the movie Big Night? Yeah. I love... That has my favorite like cooking. One, it's just a good uh, movie about a restaurant. So but the end where they just it's uh, Tony Shalhoub and uh, why am I blanking on his name? The guy. Um, Not Tucci. Tucci. Yeah, I was blanking on yep. Stanley Tucci's <laughs> name. Uh, it's just the two of them and they're just like making eggs and 
It's the best. Yeah, that scene is fantastic. So the best. All right, uh, do we? I think we we covered a lot of ground. I feel like I think we did too. So for today, the book recommendation is the Baker's Apprentice by Peter Reinhardt. Um, it came out in the early, early, early two thousands, but you can find it anywhere. Um, big ups to Chef Reinhardt. Nice. All right, and you're gonna I keep us. Hope <laughs> doesn't remember me. <laughs> But you're going to keep us updated on your bread journey. Too. Yes. Yes. It's a journey. I just posted a picture on Instagram of my focaccia that's going in tomorrow. Love it. Get ready, world. I've also spent a lot of time trying to fix my hair for the past couple seconds and just the things that are happening. I'm so glad you can't see. I mean, I can see it, but it's okay. Yeah, exactly. You're like a brother to me. <laughs> uh, do you remember your sign off? You texted me one. You I do, do everybody. Yeah. We've got it. Um, all right, everybody. Thank you for listening. We super appreciate it, as we always do. And don't forget, from Joel and I, you've got this. I love that. Stephanie Knows Some Shit is hosted by Stephanie Smar and me, Joel Murphy, and produced by me. If you enjoyed the show, give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. And instead of a review, tell us about a meal that you ate or made recently. We'd love to read about it. In a world where people watch movies. I think I'm going to watch a movie. Sometimes they don't like what they see. I don't like this movie. But sometimes they look for the silver lining. Wait a second. I like this part of this movie. Joel and Andy do that work for you. The Silver Linings Playback. I like this part of this podcast where they tell me the part of the movie I like. Every Monday on the Peak Sloth Podcast Network or wherever you get your podcasts.